Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Due to the depletion of fossil fuels, many alternative fuels are coming up. But can they be directly used in our existing vehicles? Well, no, it's not possible. A vehicle's engine design is significantly affected by what goes into it, that is, the fuel it uses to run, say petrol or diesel. Similarly, based upon the property of alternative fuel used, engines are supposed to be designed or modified accordingly. As we already spoke in one of our previous videos, for which the link is in the description, vehicles powered by ethanol require no or less modification based on the blends used. In today's video, we'll be talking about the modification of an SI engine powered by bioethanol. In a normal SI engine, the air-fuel mixture ratio that is required for complete combustion is 14.7 is to 1. That is, 14.7 kg of air is required for the complete combustion of 1 kg of petrol. But in case of ethanol, the oxygen present in it can affect the air-fuel mixture ratio at which the engine is operating. For example, E10 blend of fuel will normally have an oxygen content of about 3.5%. So, taking into account the oxygen content in ethanol, it is necessary to reduce the air-fuel mixture ratio. For example, a Volkswagen Golf running on 22% ethanol has 12.7 is to 1 as its air-fuel mixture ratio. In modern cars, the engine management system electronically senses and changes the air-fuel mixture ratio to maintain the stoichiometric ratio when ethanol fuel is used. Whereas in old cars, since they use a carburetor and are not equipped with an engine management system, the air-fuel mixture must be adjusted manually. Next up is the fuel filter. Ethanol deposits a lot of solid impurities on the fuel filter, so it may be necessary to change the fuel filter more often. Speaking of fuels, did you know vehicles using ethanol blends have a separate tank for petrol as well? This petrol is used for starting the engine. The reason behind this is ethanol's latent heat of vaporization is higher than petrol. That means more energy is required to convert liquid into gas. So, petrol used for ignition provides the energy that is required to convert liquid ethanol blend back into a gas. Next up, as we already spoke in one of our previous videos, when the first oil crisis began in 1973, many countries opted for alternative fuels. Brazil was one such country which opted for the usage of ethanol blends. During the 1970s, the following engine modifications were carried out in vehicles which operated on ethanol blends of between 14% and 24% ethanol. Fuel lines and fuel tanks were plated with nickel to prevent ethanol E20 corrosion. Certain changes were also done to the materials of pistons, piston rings, intake manifolds and carburetors to avoid corrosion. Even the materials of the cylinder walls, cylinder heads, walls and wall seats also had to be changed to avoid corrosion. The fuel flow rate of injectors were increased to compensate for oxygen content that was required for combustion. In case of higher usage of ethanol blends, there would be vehicle damage and drivability problems. Also, the vehicle warranty would become null and void. For example, in the UK, nearly all vehicle manufacturers specify that maximum ethanol blend in petrol should be no more than 5% by volume. Similarly, in the USA, nearly all the vehicle manufacturers specify that the maximum ethanol blend in petrol should not exceed more than 10% by volume. So, the vehicle owners should adhere to the manufacturer's recommendation on the fuel to be used. Well, that's it for today's video, guys. We'll meet again in the next one. Stay home and stay safe. Until the next one, bye!